catheters to the left chin. So adult catheters range from anywhere from 20 French to 20, 12 French to 24 French. And we have different sizes right here. So um, 12 French, maybe sometimes for female, just for comfort's sake, but for men with um, enlarged uh, prostate, we wanna go to a um, larger size. And then if they have, um, the goal is to get the best catheter for the job. If they have a lot of, um, if they have clear urine without a lot of sediment or debris, um, they can do a smaller catheter, but use larger catheters for hematuria, hematuria, clots, or debris, et cetera. And a coude tip catheter for a large prostate, generally um, 16 to 18 French, but we also have anywhere, um, we have 20 to 24 as well. Um, smaller catheters may not be firm enough to go past the prostate, um, and that's when you want to use a coude catheter. Um, you're going to insert it upright to go over the um, enlarged prostate. And then here's the difference here, a regular prostate, and then as you can see, they're enlarging here, and that's why you're going to need a bigger the catheter with the coude tip to go over the prostate, and this one's a lot firmer than a smaller catheter. Um, and there's silicone catheters available for patients with uh, latex allergies. Okay. Um, so talking about the different types of catheters, there's two-way, which um, has, it's just our standard ones. It has the, the part that goes down to the bag and then it has just the balloon port. Um, you can see, let's see, this is a two-way. So if you see the lumens there, there's that big circle, which is draining to the bag, and then there's an itty bitty little circle, and that's what's gonna inflate the balloon. So it actually has a pretty good uh, diameter. This is a 22 French two-way. Um, the three-way, if you wanna see that lumen here, um, it has the three uh, parts in it, which one, so the biggest one is gonna be draining to the bag. One of them's for irrigation, uh, the smaller ones, and then the other small one would be for the balloon. So if you see here, the comparison between the two, um, the two-way catheter, which is here, has a larger diameter than the three-way catheter. So um, the three-way catheter is only used for um, someone with really heavy hematuria that's having clots, um, and the three-way port, so this is what the catheter looks like, but um, this would go typically to a bag, and then this is one um, which would be used for the continuous irrigation. So this would connect to the tubing, which would be flowing continuously to irrigate into their bladder and help to um, kind of dilute that blood and help them to hopefully not clot off their catheter. Um, so if you place a three-way catheter in the clinic, uh, you would need to put a cap on, which that goes in there. That's just so, because urine could flow out of this uh, tubing if you don't cap that off. And then this would go to the bag um, this is a leg bag, but that's just how, how it would be set up. Um, and so we were talking about how it's um, a judgment call of whether you would want to put a two-way or a three-way. If you think they're likely going to need continuous bladder irrigation, then you would want to put a three-way. If someone's having hematuria, but it's not heavy enough to require the three-way or continuous irrigation, then you'd want to put in a two-way because, um, that three-way catheter with the narrow um, lumen would potentially block up easier since it's smaller in diameter. So if they're going home, it would be a two-way. If they need CBI, it would be a three-way. <clears throat> so typically we'll bring in a couple catheters to get the job done. Um, that's, we talked about considering alternatives. Um, for what's going on so you would assess your patient you want to know their history um, if they've had um, a history of enlarged prostate um, um, and when you get your Foley kit um, you want to the thing that the urologist really like is a um, Eurojet because um, this makes the insertion more comfortable for the patient and it adds some extra lubrication um, for the patient to make like I said more comfortable and with men with enlarged prostate it makes the insertion go in better so when we do it here at the clinic, we don't have any bedside tables, so we have mayo um, stands that we use to make sure the mayo stand's clean, and we set up our sterile fills um, on the mayo stand. So we use this, so it comes in order of how to, um, to use things. So you put this on the around the patient to get your clean, clean space. 
you uh, clean the patient with just regular gloves with this. You clean the area that you're going to insert the catheter. And then when you take off your regular gloves, you're going to use your um, Purell gel. Obviously, before you start everything, you wash your hands with soap and water. And then everything's right in order. And then you'll open up and go in order. And then you'll put okay, your beer your and drop yeah. it on. Yep. And then that's way. So please use it. Make sure the Eurojet the Eurojet is sterile when inserting it into the patient. Mm -hmm. And then the nice thing about the Mayo stand is you can keep it within um, arm's reach, and that makes sure that you keep the um, it sterile for when you insert in the patient to so you don't give them an infection. And if you need um, help, grab some help and. Um, uh, that way you can keep everything clean for the safety of the patient. Okay, so um, after we have it all ready, we're gonna be working on getting the catheter in. Um, she talked about washing your hands, but yeah, you always wanna wash your hands before um, cleaning the patient, before getting your stuff ready. Um, we usually check with our patients about allergies, uh, latex allergies, we can use a silicone catheter for that. Um, iodine allergies, then you wouldn't want to use the betadine in the kit. You could use chlorhexidine. If they happen to be allergic to both, um, there are, are alternatives, but um, typically chlorhexidine is our go-to. Um, also, if they happen to be allergic to lidocaine or anything, that would make you not want to use the Eurojet. Um, so you want to position the patient on the table, typically laying them down. You want to lift them up so you're not hurting your back. Um, Typically, like kind of frog-legged, or um, especially for women, you want to get their legs kind of open and um, spread so that you can visualize better. For men, sometimes that can be helpful um, if you're having difficulty. Um, so we talked about the sterile technique. You open it on here. You would want to, yeah. You'd want to um, open your um, your peri care stuff that we talked about. Use your um, Purell. Open your Eurojet, which comes in a sterile. Um, container and that's in the Pixis under lidocaine it's two percent and it does say I think Eurojet on there so um, that is in all of our Pixis and then um, just you can use additional soap so if some patients like if someone just needs extra care extra cleaning or um, like maybe someone's incontinent or um, on men you want to make sure you pull back the foreskin and if maybe it's not clean you want to make sure you clean them up good you can use soap and water first and then do the wipes and then do the betadine or whatever you're going to do just to make sure they're good and clean. And at this point, this if you re, if you um, put the pore skin back, please put it back to where you got it, um, so you don't cause any trauma in that aspect. Okay. Um, so clean the meatus with beta dyne. So that's going to be your next step after you clean the area with the um, with the wipes. Um, instill the Eurojet directly into your urethra and allow um, it to dwell one to two minutes. Um, I typically just. Some of the urologists will pinch the um, head of the penis to keep the Eurojet in there. I just put my thumb over the insertion site. And then mm -hmm. we do have penile clamps available as well yeah. if the patient would like it to in, um, be Except in a little bit longer. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and then um, I, connect the, I connect the Foley to the bag so that in order that I don't get the patient urine on the patient before I get started. And I do that all with my sterile technique. Um, and then insert the catheter. If the patient is a male, advance the hub before inflating a balloon. Tina, can you show them? Yeah, so <laughs> on our catheters, uh, you want to advance all the way so that this, this hub here is all you're seeing. So all the way, push it into the penis until this is all you're seeing. And then that's when you would inflate the balloon. Um, so we can make sure that it's all the way in. If you see on the catheters, the hole that's for drainage is here and the balloon is here. So if you were to go in and maybe just barely get into the bladder, you might have urine return right there, but the, the balloon here is still in the urethra. So that's why you still want to advance it further. So that way we're getting the balloon completely out of the urethra and we're not going to cause a perforation or something to the patient. Yeah, I can see. <clears throat> and then you'll want to, um, so we talked about inflating the balloon and making sure it's all the way to the hub, like Tina described, and secure the catheter in place with the stat lock, giving the proximal tubing adequate um, slack so when the patient stands up, it's not pooling and causing trauma. And then um, our patients usually go home with their catheters, so we, here's a leg bag, and Tina will show you how yep. that is. So the leg bag comes in a container that looks like this. It's fairly small. This is folded up inside. Um, the main points for the leg bag is you want this arrow that says top to be pointing towards the patient. 
So it's going up towards the catheter and towards the patient. So this little green part goes into the tubing, the draining lumen of the catheter. And then these straps just go around the patient's leg. Typically on the thigh, you don't wanna pull it far down because then it could put some traction on the catheter and cause pain. So these just loop around and it has a really simple cap for emptying that this just pops off. You empty and then you put it back on. And I want to say too, um, there's really um, excellent patient um, education in SharePoint for catheter care. So um, and if you have a patient that has a catheter, please print it out and give it to them because there's some really good um, information in there for them. Okay, so then we wanted to go over some troubleshooting tips, just things if you do place a catheter and you run into issues, things that you can do um, to try to troubleshoot. So if you feel a resistance, um, you can ask the patient to take a deep breath. Sometimes with men, you'll get some resistance right around the prostate area. Um, so sometimes they kind of clench and you can't really get it past. So you want them to relax a little bit, take a deep breath, they can wiggle their toes, anything that's gonna help them to relax that little bit so you can get past the prostate. Um, if there is res resistance, you don't wanna push forcefully. Um, we do have to give some pressure, but we don't wanna like jam or force anything. Some patients can have a false passageway, which is like the urethra, it's like a road, and then if, if the road had like a little turn off, like dead end turn off where you, it doesn't go anywhere. So sometimes um, the catheter can go up into that side road that's not going to the bladder, and you're not gonna be able to get anywhere, and that's gonna cause trauma. So if you continually get resistance, um, I would just stop. You don't wanna cause more trauma. Um, if the patient has an enlarged prostate, maybe you know they have a history of prostate cancer, they could have just BPH, um, or any of those issues, it could mean that they have that larger prostate like we talked about, um, which you would want to switch to a CUDE catheter. Um, or if you know that patient on the front end, you know they have that problem, you could just bring a CUDE because oftentimes it is more helpful. And like I think Trudy mentioned, the larger catheters are better for the coup days because they're just firmer and they're better able to get past the prostate. Sometimes the littler ones will actually bend because the tubing is just not firm enough to go past. Um, and then the other issue you might encounter is no urine return, which that's a big one. I know in nursing school we like advance and we expect to see the urine come out. Um, so for in some situations it's not uncommon to not have urine return. If a patient has a chronic indwelling catheter and they're getting it exchanged monthly, um, during those exchanges, we just removed a catheter and now we're putting a new one in. Their bladder is often not full and so they, you might not get any urine back because you just changed it and it's empty still. Um, if that's the case, uh, in other circumstances, you can um, bladder scan the patient, just see is there urine in there that we're not getting. At least it could give you reassurance if it comes back zero, you know that, okay, we're empty, that's why I'm not getting urine. Um, in, you can, yeah, so the bladder <laughs> scan is here, um, it's pretty simple, we can, I guess, go over quickly what, so it has different options here for a man, a woman, and a child, um, if it's a woman that has had a hysterectomy, you would do it as a man, um, so that the uterus isn't present, so, um, you would just put some lubricant on. You're doing this on the lower they abdomen. Test of the back. Um, and then, they test of the back. That's paging system. so you would open this, put some gel like either on their abdomen or you can put it on here. And then this has the little clicky button right here. So you put it on the patient's lower abdomen, you click the button, and then this searches for you. So it says zero and it's blinking all of the arrows, which would mean it's not telling me to move. If I was off, it would say, it would point an arrow going, move that way, or it would point an arrow in which direction it wants me to move. Typically, we wouldn't just take one uh, look. You would wanna look a few different angles, just make sure you're not missing something. Some patients, like if they have a neobladder or some surgical um, procedures in the past, it could be in a different area. So you just wanna look around a little bit to be sure you're seeing the whole picture and not just um, taking the one uh, look and calling it good. Um, you can kind of gently press on their suprapubic area, just make sure if you're, you know, if you're feeling fullness or distension, maybe the tube isn't in the right spot, which can happen with female patients. Typically males, it's pretty straightforward, but with females, um, if you put a catheter in, you don't get any urine return, and you're expecting to get urine return, I would leave the catheter in place, take another look, maybe get some better lighting, you can get someone to help you if you need better visualization, 
and um, see if maybe that catheter that's in maybe is in the vagina and maybe you need to uh, look and see if you can find the urethra and put the catheter in there. Um, some more troubleshooting. So can't find the meatus. Anatomy can vary. Females urethra can be closer to the vagina like Tina talked about tips for that. Um, males urethra may be on the ventral penis or even near the base of the penis so surgical issues can, or it, surgical histories can change um, that and a lot of times the patient um, knows and will give you tell you some guidance in that aspect if not you can refer to the physician um, patients with advanced disease may have tumor involvement in or around the urethra um, at this point I usually will get a second hand to help me because it will be a more difficult um, insertion um, if you're causing the patient a lot of pain like Tina said earlier stop if you're having difficulties get help uh, let the doctor know don't just keep um, probing around. Um, have it, and she said, have another nurse come in with you to help visualize. And then I, we can't stress the lighting, um, especially with women, is your best friend in this situation. Um, catheter is not draining, which we have this a lot with our um, patients because um, of hematuria or sediment. Um, the, we have the irrigation kits available, so if we ir irrigate the catheter, sometimes this will easily resolve the situation um, using saline to irrigate and um, to open up the catheter because if something is obstructing this tiny little hole, um, the urine is gonna flow around this and um, typically drain around the penis or around the urethra and causing some discomfort with the urine leaking um, on the patient. And typically we get a lot of calls from triage for this situation. Um, so things, like I said, that will uh, um, help the situation is irrigating the catheter. And sometimes um, the patient will have to come in and get a larger catheter. Um, that way, um, any debris can just pass through the um, a bigger hole or in a bigger diameter of the catheter and cause the patient some relief of having um, urine constantly around um, the skin and causing some irritation. Um, and um, some other things a patient can check for and make sure that the um, tubing is not kinked. Typically patients will come in and they have it folded up in their um, pants or, yeah. and, um, or like hung up, their yeah, wheelchair hung is up hung or, on like yeah. the IV tubing. Or, so those are more simpler yeah. solutions uh, compared to irrigation. Um, check if the stat lock is um, um, uh, on correctly as well and then ensure the leg bags are right tied up um, like Tina discussed earlier. Yeah. There's so an if arrow. It was, if it was upside down, if you hooked it up this way where it's pointing down, this has a valve in it and it won't let it flow down. So the urine's not gonna go into the bag unless you have it done correctly, which would be for this arrow to be towards the patient. So top pointing up. But most of our most of the things that Tina and I see in the urology department is the patient does need to be irrigated, and that's something we can assist with. Um, they don't have to go to the emergency room. That's an easy thing we can do in the clinic and save them time in the emergency room. And then there's just some anatomy here. Just some refresher. Fantastic. Thank you both. Oh, Tina and Trudy, welcome. our amazing <laughs> urology clinic RNs. <laughs> yes. And they're available for any yes. any assistance needed, and they're happy to help. We're happy. We don't want our patients to go to the emergency don't room. Don't send them to the ER. <laughs> we'll take care of them. <laughs> Thank you. You're